To what's up guys welcome to my humble YouTube channel where I bring you fanfiction that will brighten your days. Before we start a subscribe is greatly appreciated and don't forget to leave a like and ring the bell icon so you won't miss exciting new fanfiction stories. K-O-N-O-S-U-R-A, God's Blessing on This Wonderful Storm, by Queen Shuna. Chapter 1 Chaotic Beginnings, Just What the Hell Happened? I'm alive? I was just stabbed wasn't I? What am I doing in a cave and, so low to the ground? He looked around, seeing what was basically an empty cave with various crystals illuminating the area. He attempted to stand up and walk around, but found himself unable to. He could no longer feel his arms or legs. The hell? I can't feel anything. Am I paralyzed? Am I dreaming? As he attempted to move anything he succeeded in squirming around, however the movement didn't feel right, it didn't feel human. He moved around some more and after a few moments attempted to bounce, succeeding in doing so. After a bit more analysis he came to a conclusion. What the hell? I'm a slime. Like in those video games. Last thing I remember was being stabbed in the street and dying. Now I'm some slime ball. It could be worse, I suppose. There could have been no afterlife at all. Is this even the afterlife? I feel like it's not. I must have been reincarnated as a slime. It's so annoying though. Couldn't some haughty goddess at least warn me before? The slime side, however, decided that there wasn't much it could do in its current state. Bouncing around, he found a patch of herbs as he landed on top of it, attempting to eat it as he successfully dissolved it inside of him. That's a new feeling. Seems I can devour things into my, would you call it a stomach? I'm not sure where it's going. I don't think I even need to eat, but I think I still have it inside of me, there must be some sort of storage space there. I seem to be able to analyze it, too. Hippocute herbs, they're apparently called. It seems they can be turned into potions. Sucks that I don't know how to make them. Wait potions. That sounds fantasy ESC. Actually, I'm a slime monster, of course it's a fantasy world. Let's just hope I don't become someone's early game XP. The slime continued to bounce around, going from one field of herbs to the next, lacking anything else to do and not knowing any way to the exit. After a few minutes had passed, the slime was eating yet another group of herbs as he heard a voice echo through the cave. Do you hear me, little one? The smile froze in shock, looking around to try and find out where the voice came from, though not moving his slime body as to not alert it of his presence. Again the voice echoed, little one, do you hear me? The slime now froze, hoping that in pretending it couldn't hear him that the loud and intimidating voice would go away. The voice, however, was not fooled. I know you can hear me. The slime turned its body slowly towards the source of the noise, jumping in shock as he saw a massive dragon towering overhead, a glowing barrier surrounding him completely. The slime let out a loud scream as he began to slowly back away. Hey. No. Wait. See come back. The dragon made a fake cough. I mean, come closer little one, I demand thee. The slime was somewhat less intimidated as it heard the dragon stutter now slowly inching closer to the towering dragon as it let out a sigh of relief before quickly fixing its posture. The dragon now towered over the slime, his body consisting of light blue scales lining the underside of his body with much darker scales lining the top, white horns extending out of his skill, shoulders, and the tips of his wings. The dragon's size was easily larger than a two-story house and had it not been for the dragon's head leaning down closer to the slime, the slime would have had to raise his face to look almost directly upwards. Examining the slime closely, the dragon eventually raised his head slightly upwards again, proudly exclaiming, I am the storm dragon, Veldora, one of only four true dragons which exist. Kya ha 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 ha. The slime trembled as Veldora's powerful laugh shook the entire cave, causing him to squish down, intimidated. T that sounds, impressive. The dragon sighed, I suppose you don't know who I am. Do you? To be fair there never were any churches that worshipped as true dragons, I'd argue only the gods know we exist. The slime was now confused, tilting his slime body as if it was his head, churches. Gods? What's all this about? I just died and showed up here, is this some weird afterlife? Afterlife? Kya ha ha ha. The dragon's laugh again shook the entire cave as the slime better prepared itself this time to face it, no, this is far from the afterlife. It would appear you have been reincarnated. Though, it is strange that you just woke up here randomly. Usually when they reincarnate someone, one of the gods is the one to do it, and when they do they usually at least tell you beforehand. 
If you don't know anything then that's certainly an exception. Yeah. I don't remember anything of the sort. I was stabbed, died, and woke up here as a slime. This world seems to be far more fantasy than the one I was from though, the slime replied. Veldora thought for a moment, hum, I suppose I wouldn't be surprised if my brother made it so that there's a rare chance that someone can be reincarnated randomly into another world. Your brother? The slime tilted its head in the opposite direction this time. Ah right, I should explain some things to you. You're the first one to visit me since I was sealed here, so I don't mind the discussion. You see, I am one of four true dragons. You mentioned that already, the slime muttered. Ah right, as true dragons stand a tier above the gods, with us being direct relatives to the creator of everything, my brother Veldneva. Being effectively above gods, we're able to do basically whatever we want without rules, unlike gods which do have some rules. Of course our powers aren't limitless and unfortunately as the youngest, I am the weakest of my siblings. The slime was beginning to understand, but one part confused him, you mentioned you're sealed here though. How does such a powerful dragon get sealed away? And why here of all places? Veldora got visibly nervous at this question, muttering, W well for one, it was my sisters that placed this on me, it's unlimited imprisonment, it could contain basically anything, though it's not completely invulnerable. If I wasn't sealed inside it, I could probably destroy it from the outside. As for why though, you see I sometimes get bored of existing beyond all of the worlds like my siblings do, so I sometimes go down and have a bit of fun. The slime now seemed to be piecing together what happened, and what does this fun include, Veldora? Well, in hindsight it might not look the best, but as a true dragon I sort of found it most fun to do a bit of a rampage, I held back though. I could probably destroy a kingdom if I tried. I just wanted to burn a few things and whatnot, nothing important or anything. The slime stared at Veldora, if he was a human he would be doing nothing but blinking at him right now. Whenever I did so, my sisters would always come down, beat me up, and send me back. This time though, I rampaged through this region of this world and they decided to just seal me away and be done with me. Of course, I'll eventually just die here so it's no big deal. No big deal. Now I feel kinda bad for this guy. Sure, he's probably caused a lot of damage, but at least he realizes his mistakes now. To spend so many years in isolation to just die, that kinda sucks. The dragon continued, B but. But, in rampaging through here I not only completely destroyed all human settlements but I also killed all the big dangerous monsters in the area. If my guesses are correct, the region should be a fairly peaceful place without any huge dangerous monsters, even after a few hundred years. I I see. At least something good came out of that, the slime muttered as he looked up again at Veldora. What does that have to do with me being here, though? Ah right. I got a bit off track there. My brother, Veldneva, created basically everything. He also created a soul transfer system which allows souls to be reincarnated if need be. Most get a choice between the afterlife or reincarnation, though I should mention the latter always involves the complete wiping of the memory. Normally, it's the god's job to manage stuff like that. However in this case one of two things happened. Veldora lifted one finger as he began, the first possibility is that my brother's system reincarnated you without taking you to the gods, either accidentally or intentionally. Knowing my brother there's a chance he made it possible for that to happen to, spice things up, in some worlds at random. In such a case, it's also possible you have some overpowered abilities like he gives to some people at random it seems. The dragon lifted another finger. The second possibility is that a god or goddess reincarnated you, however was sloppy on the memory wipe part, and ended up only erasing your memories of the interaction with said god or goddess. Either way, it doesn't really matter. I suppose you're free to do as you wish in this world, if you can look past being a slime, that is. I see, that's a lot of information to dump on me, but it was useful. Sorry if I bothered you. The slime did his best attempt at a bow, Veldora nodding, seemingly understanding his attempt. Oh it's fine I don't mind at all, I've been incredibly bored, the dragon said, looking downwards. The slime thought for a moment before bouncing forwards and raising a part of his slime as if raising his hand, why don't you and I become friends? What? A slime and a true dragon's is friends? Veldora shouted, causing the slime to back up slightly in shock. Why you don't want to? The slime asked, muttering as he withdrew further. W well. I if you insist, the mighty true dragon began to seemingly pout as he tapped his fingers together. What is he? 
A sunere. Why yes I insist. If you refuse I won't come back here again. The slime shouted, bouncing forwards back towards Veldora. W well alright. I'll be your friend. Why you best be grateful. Veldora exclaimed, accepting the slime now as his friend. The two tapped their hands against each other. The slime extending a little hand of his slime and Veldora extending one of his claws, the two meeting together against the barrier as they symbolically began their friendship. Now then, is there any way I can help you get out of here? Veldora shook his head, I doubt even the devil king of this world could probably break me out of here, although. The slime looked up with curiosity, what is it? If I recall correctly, the goddess of this world had a problem with the devil king and my brother allowed them to offer a single wish of anything to whoever killed it. Since then they've been semi-frequently summoning people from some other world to this one with some power or weapon they want. They aren't reincarnated though, so I'd hardly say you were among them. Even still, that wish can do basically anything, so it should be able to break me out if you wish for it. The slime nodded, I see, you mentioned you've been in here a while though, are you sure they haven't beaten him yet? Veldora shrugged, eh, not completely confident, but I believe they haven't, I'm no longer able to directly connect with the realm of the gods and my siblings, but I still have a general sense of when they summon people, especially since they tend to summon them nearby. I assume there's probably a settlement relatively close by. It takes a bit more of their force to summon someone's soul with their former body intact, not to mention with a powerful item or ability with it. The slime bounced up excitedly, all right then. I guess that's my goal, I'll go find and defeat the devil king. Veldora returned to pouting, tapping his fingers again. Why you're leaving already? Yep, definitely a sunere, the slime thought for another moment, hum, how about this? I could bring you with me. How would you do that? I told you, you can't break this. Maybe not, but I can eat it. Huh. I seem to have this space in my stomach where things go. From what I can tell it's basically infinite, so if I eat you, you should be able to rest inside. I'm also able to analyze things that are there, who knows, maybe I'll be able to find out its weakness and eventually be able to break it myself. Veldora was silent for a moment before he began to chuckle, quickly erupting into full-blown laughter that once more shook the entire cave. Kyahaha. What an interesting idea, I'll entrust my entirety to you. Either way I'll be by myself for a while, so it sounds more fun to hitch a ride with you. The slime nodded, already preparing to eat him before he was interrupted by Veldora, wait. If you are new to this world, I assume that you don't have a name. The slime shook his head, I suppose I don't, but I don't see why I can't use my old one. Veldora scoffed, bah. Unoriginal. How about this, I'll grant you a name and in exchange you'll grant us both what humans would call a family name, it'll be a sign of our sworn friendship. Kyahaha. The slime bounced upwards in approval, all right, let's do it. Veldora then lowered his finger towards the slime, your name shall now be Rimuru. Rimuru thought for a moment before finally coming up with a name, and our name shall be Tempest. Veldora roared out in laughter again, Kyahaha. I shall henceforth be known as Veldora Tempest, and you as Rimuru Tempest. I am ready, let's do this. Rimuru nodded one last time as he used his skill to completely devour Veldora and his seal, slowly condensing as his slime surrounded him, condensing more and more until he finally returned to his normal size. Phew, that was a lot. It seems I need to defeat this devil king, huh? I probably should have asked Veldora for some details about him first. Kyahaha. <laughs> Well I'll be happy to tell you. Closing curly bracket. Wah, Veldora. Good, you can hear me. I was worried I'd have to sit and be bored again until you figured out how to free me. It seems that not only can I see what you see right now, I can also look through your memories. Not to mention I can speak with you like I am now. If you let me I could even help with managing some of these neat skills you have. Closing curly bracket. That would probably be a great help. Thank you. It's nothing for my sworn friend. Kyahaha. <laughs> also I've had nothing to do for 300 years so something to finally do is surprisingly relieving. I may not know everything, but you'll find the wisdom of a true dragon to be quite vast. Closing curly bracket. All right then, what do you know about this devil king then? Absolutely nothing. Closing curly bracket. Huh, I came into this world to fuck around, Rimuru. I don't really keep track of the details of it. Sorry about that, bud. Closing curly bracket. I suppose I should have expected as much, 
I imagine there's a lot of worlds with a lot of things going on so bothering to try remembering it all must be exhausting. Yeah, that's why I never really bothered. I don't think many of the gods bothered either. Closing curly bracket. Rimuru now turned towards the crystals shimmering across the cave all over, can you tell me what these are, perhaps? I'm not too sure if I'm being honest. But they weren't here when I was sealed here, that's for sure. I imagine they're manifestations of my mana spreading through the cave. They're probably worth something. Closing curly bracket. Rimuru bounced up on top of one of the crystals, slowly disintegrating it inside of him as he analyzed it. Seems to be called manatite, and yeah it definitely seems to have been made from your mana. Seems to function like a magical battery of sorts. Many humans like to cast large spells despite their poor mana reserves, so they probably sell for a lot in human cities. Closing curly bracket. I suppose I could also use it for my own mana if need be. I'll see how valuable it is, if it's too rare I may be more cautious with how I spend it. Satisfied with this information, Rimuru began to bounce around the cave, eating herbs, crystals, and even absorbing a bunch of water as he moved throughout it, looking for the exit. As he looked, however, he stumbled across a towering serpent easily a hundred times larger than a snake probably should be. The snake was black and blue and in part appeared to look like a snake version of Veldora's draconic appearance, of course lacking the teeth, wings, and limbs he had. Hey ooh, is that thing related to you? I don't think so. It may have been created or strengthened from my mana leaking out into this cave, though. Closing curly bracket. I suppose that justifies the look. Let's see if I can sneak past. And take the coward's way out. Bah, you are my sworn friend. Let's take out this snake. Closing curly bracket. I if you insist, just how should I do that? I don't think I have many ways to attack. Hum, let me look at your skills. Yeah it seems your only real offensive skill is predator, and I don't think you have a good chance of eating that thing without weakening it. You don't have any spells either. Oh I know. What if I launch a pressurized blast of water at them? That may work. Here, I should be able to help you shape it into a blade in your stomach for you to launch it out at them. On done. Have it M my friend. Closing curly bracket. Rimuru nodded, bouncing forwards as he leaned back and thrust forwards, launching a blade of pressurized water at the serpent as it cut its head clean off. The head slammed against the ground as the body squirmed around in its last moments of life. And now, predator. Rimuru quickly expanded his body to engulf the snake, devouring it completely as it dissolved within him. Mission success. Kyahahaha. Well done. It seems you've gotten some new skills from that. Poison breath and sense heat source, nice. It seems that water blade has also turned into a skill. It seems you'll get strong in no time at all. Closing curly bracket. Rimuru nodded and carried on, now on the lookout for monsters as well as an exit. It didn't take long for yet more monsters to appear on their path, an armorsaurus, an evil centipede, and a black spider. Each was taken out with surprising ease, and numerous skills were gained from devouring them. Let's go over what you got. Body armor skill from the Armorsaurus, paralysis breath from the evil centipede, and sticky steel string from the black spider. Quite a haul if I do say so, my friend. K-Y-A-H-A-H-A-H-A. Yeah, but I still can't find the exit. If I remember correctly, this cave isn't terribly large, you should be nearing it soon. Closing curly bracket. True to his word, Rimuru arrived at what seemed to be the gate to the outside world not long after, though as he approached it, it appeared to be enchanted with all sorts of magic. Frustrated, Veldora shouted, Damn it! I should have expected my sister would do something like this. What is it? That door has three enchantments on it. The first is an enchantment to make sure my excess mana doesn't flow beyond the cave and to prevent attracting attention. The second seems to be an illusion spell to prevent anyone outside of the cave from detecting the door. The last one is a locking enchantment, a sort of seal if you will, to make sure the door is both near indestructible as well as fully locked without actually needing a pickable keyhole. Closing curly bracket. They really wanted to keep you in, huh? No, this would have done nothing. If I managed to get out of unlimited imprisonment, I could get through this door quite easily. I imagine it's more to prevent anyone from finding me. Closing curly bracket. I see, so how do we break it? Yeah, that's the thing, I don't think we can. 
Closing curly bracket. Huh. I'm sure there might be a few magic users in this world that could break the lock portion of this gate, especially seeing how much that particular enchantment has decayed over the years, but since you don't actually know any magic, you can't do much. Closing curly bracket. Ah. Well you mentioned it decayed, right? Is it possible that it'll decay away completely eventually? Yes, a locking spell like that usually requires at least some upkeep. My sisters were probably too lazy to bother and so it's gradually gotten weaker over time. Eventually it'll be weak enough that it basically won't exist anymore, but we're going to have to wait probably another 100 to 200 years for that. Closing curly bracket. So I suppose we're stuck having to wait then, or perhaps find some other way out from the inside. I take it that water blade isn't going to do any damage either. Nope. It probably won't. Anyways. While we wait we cool. Beldora was suddenly interrupted as Rimuru looked up to see a thin layer of light appear around the gate before promptly shattering. Jumping back in shock, he turned mentally to Beldora, what was that? Well shit. Closing curly bracket. Huh. What is it? Tell me. Someone just broke the lock. Closing curly bracket. Wah. I thought you said they'd have to be strong to do that. They would. Be prepared, we don't know if this person is friend or foe. Closing curly bracket. The gate slowly creaked open as a woman silently stepped through. She had black hair and silver gray eyes, visible burn scars under one of her eyes. She wore black leggings and a white shirt, a white cape and gloves matching it with details of light blue which matched the hilt of the sword on her back. The girl entered the cave with a serious look on her face, quickly noticing the slime on the floor and scoffing. I expected more difficult monsters in this cave, oh well, I might as well get rid of it. She waved her hand upwards, creating a small flaming sphere as she waved it back down, launching the flame rapidly towards the slime, prompting Rimuru to jump back shouting, EY. Watch where you're throwing that. The girl stopped her walking as she turned towards the slime, huh, an intelligent slime. There aren't many of you. You bunch tend to be a lot stronger than your conventional slime counterparts. Either way, I suppose you could help me. You see, I am Shizu Izawa, a general of the Devil King. I'm looking for a massive dragon, I believe him to be sealed here somewhere. Supposedly he's potentially stronger than even the gods. He's supposed to be in this cave, considering you live here, do you know where he is? Shit, this cute woman works for the Devil King. At least we know he's still around. That's a good thing, right? If we need to defeat the Devil King we need to take out his generals too. We should take her out. Closing curly bracket. Huh, you think I even have the strength to do that? All things considered, I think you have a fair shot. That water blade skill of yours scales in power the more mana you flow into it. With how much mana type you have, you could launch quite a lot of powerful blasts. Closing curly bracket. I don't know. Come on Rimuru. You got this. Blast this general to kingdom come. Closing curly bracket. Fine. The slime shook his head, big dragon. I've not seen anything of the sort in this cave. All you got are big snakes and spiders. The girl rubbed her chin, pulling out her sword and engulfing it in flames. It's unwise to lie to me, slime. I've had to deal with Hans enough times to know how you work. Who's Hans? No clue. Probably someone affiliated with the Devil King. Closing curly bracket. And what if I don't want to tell you? Rimuru asked, tilting his body to show curiosity. I have no reason to let you live then. It'll only be a mild nuisance to kill you. I've spent so long following these scattered ancient documents to find this dragon, I haven't even told the Devil King about it yet, I was hoping to surprise him. If you won't tell me where it is, then I'll kill you and find it myself. I'm still confused about what a human is doing as a Devil King general. I don't know much about this world, but I thought all humans were against the Devil King. Closing curly bracket. Dunno, but she looks Japanese, perhaps it has something to do with it. But then again that might just be how people look in this world. Either way it's worth a shot to ask. Are you by chance Japanese? Rimuru asked, causing the girl to look startled and shake her head. I'm surprised you know about that but since you seem to be affiliated with this dragon, I suppose you may have heard about that. Maybe an explanation will make you more willing to cooperate. You see I was summoned here by this obnoxious bitch of a goddess after I died in the midst of a war that consumed the world. 
For a while I blindly followed their promise of a wish if I defeated the Devil King, hoping to use that to end the war in my world. But then I realized, why were the gods putting so much effort, summoning so many people, all to end the Devil King and his war in this world while doing nothing to stop the one in mine. I was angered and realized the bias of the gods. Out of spite, I turned to the Devil King who offered me a chance to oppose the gods and take revenge for their inaction in my world. W well the war that you're probably talky. Enough talk. Tell me where the dragon is. Now. Shizu pointed her blade at the slime, causing him to jump back slightly, startled at her sudden movement. It would appear that she doesn't want to talk. Looks like we'll have to fight. Kyahahaha. <laughs> Closing curly bracket. The war she's probably talking about ended though, I suppose she never knew. Either way I suppose we don't have a choice. I won't tell you. Rimuru replied blankly, preparing to jump away at their first attack. It's a shame then, you may have had the chance to become a useful asset of the Devil King. Shizu created numerous balls of fire around her, aiming them at the slime as she launched them in pairs of three, launching several pairs at the slime before stopping to examine the damage. The slime did his best to dodge these strikes, however the girl's aim was spot on, hitting him almost every time. 20% damage taken, your self-regeneration skill is recovering quickly though. Closing curly bracket. How quickly? About 5% every 2 seconds. Closing curly bracket. That's not fast enough if they keep up this barrage. I'll go on the offensive and give myself time to recover. Shizu grumbled at the fact the slime remained standing muttering, a resilient one, aren't you? She launched yet another barrage at him, unable to have the speed to dodge it, Rimuru quickly came up with an idea, launching himself away by expelling pressurized water towards the ground, launching him up and away from the impact. Kayahaha. Wonderful move. Seems you got another skill from that, keep it it. Closing curly bracket. Shizu was now angered as Rimuru continued to propulsion himself against the stone walls, roof, and floor of the cave, dodging all of her attacks as he now launched his sticky steel string skill at her. Shizu acted quickly, slashing at it with a flaming sword, causing it to burn away before it reached her. Health has fully recovered. Closing curly bracket. Great. Shizu, realizing her current attacks weren't working, charged at the slime, bringing her sword upon him as he quickly dodged out of the way. The girl slashed a few more times, getting closer and closer with each calculated swing eventually succeeding in slicing the slime in half as one half burned away into flames. That's 50% damage. Fall back. Closing curly bracket. Got it. Rimuru quickly launched back, now focusing on keeping her briefly occupied by launching poison and paralysis breaths at her, none doing all that much, though it kept her occupied as his regeneration kicked in. After a bit, he was fully recovered, 100%. Closing curly bracket. Let's go. Enough of this, Shizu shouted, slashing once more at the strings approaching her, burning them away as she cast another spell, Flare Circle. Rimuru suddenly found himself standing at the center of a large magical circle glowing a deep crimson red. In the next second flames erupted from it, creating a towering cylinder of flames stretching into the sky. Rimuru began to scream in agony as he was engulfed in the flame, it's over. I can't escape, it was a short life or a short slife, if you will, you know, I don't seem to be taking much damage. Rimuru. Yeah, this flare circle takes about 5% of your health away every 2 seconds. Your regeneration recovers at the same rate you're taking damage. Closing curly bracket. So I'm, not taking any damage. Not that matters, no. Closing curly bracket. Ah, Veldora sighed. Don't sigh at me, this is all going, according to plan. As the flames died down Shizu began to walk away deeper into the cave, making it a decent distance away before she heard the cackling of a slime behind her. Turning around she looked in shock to see the slime still standing, unharmed. Shizu's fists shook in frustration as she extended her hand out, if you're going to survive everything else then I have no choice. Rimuru made a single bounce towards Shizu, leaning back as he shouted, Water Blade. Shizu was suddenly surrounded by swirling magic as various magical circles appeared in the cave, be gone. Explodes. Shizu was cut off as her head was separated from her body, tumbling onto the floor as she collapsed, dead before she hit the ground. Kyahahaha. Great job, Rimuru. I knew you had it in ya. 
Closing curly bracket. Seems I was right that she wouldn't be able to move when she started casting that spell. I knew she was gonna try something big. A spell as simple sounding as explosion. Couldn't be too big though, could it? If I remember this world correctly, explosion is the most destructive spell they got. Closing curly bracket. Oh, well good thing she didn't get to cast it. I have a feeling even I wouldn't survive that. No clue. It was never used on me, but I imagine you probably wouldn't. Closing curly bracket. Rimuru bounced up to her body, sighing as he devoured her. Sure she was an enemy trying to kill him, but she was an enemy off of an assumption that wasn't correct. Not to mention the other enemies he had killed before were monsters, Shizu was human. Ultimately he supposed that him feeling bad was a good thing, a sign that he still had some humanity in him since becoming a slime, but still, he felt like he probably handled the situation poorly. Well it seems eating people doesn't give you their knowledge, so unfortunately you didn't learn her fire magic. You did inherit her skills though, namely fire manipulation and body double. Both seem fairly self-explanatory but just to be sure, explain them anyways. Will do, friend. Fire manipulation allows you to have some control over fire even without casting a spell. This seems to apply to both natural fires and fires cast by magic, whether yours or someone else's. There are some restrictions, but that's the gist. It also seems to allow you to learn fire magic for half the points. Closing curly bracket. Points. You learn magic with points. Apparently in this world, yes. Some worlds are different, but that's how this one works really. Closing curly bracket. I see, and body double. As the name suggests, it lets you create a copy of yourself which you can use to fight. Its stats are lower than yours, with more replicas meaning lower states for each of them. With only one double, it would have about half of your strength, at say 10, it's a tenth. Closing curly bracket. That can be useful. Either way the gates open, let's see the world. Oh wait. You can use her and take on a human form. Closing curly bracket. Oh right. I have that mimicry ability, don't I? I'll try it out. Rimuru's slime body quickly began to stretch and expand, growing upwards as it assumed the vague shape of a human, slowly becoming more tight and uniform as he fully took on the appearance of Shizu. The only major differences between Rimuru now and how Shizu looked were his golden eyes, blue hair, and the lack of clothes. Rimuru was flustered with embarrassment, but ultimately realized that there was not even anyone there to see him like this, simply sighing and accepting it for the time being. This form works, I suppose, but does it need to be a woman's? If I was a bit closer to Shizu I might have felt bad about using her appearance so closely, but right now I don't really feel anything in that regard. It's mostly just embarrassment at having such a feminine body. I don't think I even need to look down to see if my boy made it with me. If by, your boy, you mean, yeah that's not there. You mimicked a woman, unfortunately, so you have the body of a woman. If I was a bit more adept I might have been able to manipulate it a bit more to make you androgynous, but frankly you'd need a hyper-intelligent mind to pull that off. Unfortunately, despite my absolutely amazing intellect, I can't do all that. Closing curly bracket. Um hum, well, it seems I'm stuck with this, large chest and all. If you eat a guy, I may be able to strap on a. No, no, stop, we are not going there. That's a bit hypocritical considering your computer his. Stop. Touch any other part of my memories, but don't touch that. Go find some manga or something. Rimuru swore he could hear the dragon chuckling from the inner parts of his mind as he looked down again at his, or rather her naked body, what happened to her clothes. Didn't I eat those too? All right, they're right here, but if she was a demon king general, wearing her clothes as well might end up making you look a bit too similar. Closing curly bracket. You're right but I don't have any other clothes. Well since you're normally a slime, you might be able to sneak into the town and quickly snatch some. Closing curly bracket. But that's stealing. Do you have a better idea? You can always come back and sneakily put some money on the counter of whatever store you steal it from, it's fine. Closing curly bracket. Rimuru sighed. Fine, we'll do it. Let's head out then. Let's. Friend. Adventure awaits. Kyahahaha. <laughs> Closing curly bracket. Shizu found herself in a blank void, seemingly walking on nothing as she looked around at the foggy void she was now in. 
She had failed the demon king and was defeated, by a slime no less, but she felt a strange sense of relief. She had been blinded by her rage towards the gods, perhaps that was the demon king's doing or perhaps that was her own. As she walked around in silence she heard a somewhat familiar voice call out behind her, hey sorry about that. She turned to see the blue slime standing about 10 feet away from her. The slime seemed to be rubbing its head with a little bit of slime that extended like an arm out of its spherical body. She shook her head, it's fine. It's how this world works, I sought to kill you and you succeeded in killing me first. I'm partially glad that I'm free of it, my mind was clouded with rage for so long I had hardly taken a second to look back and reflect on everything. You were going to say something before I started attacking, weren't you? Yes. Truth is, I'm Japanese myself, though I wasn't reincarnated here by a god or anything like that. I just woke up here reborn as a slime. What I meant to say was that the war you mentioned is already over. Japan has been at peace for almost a hundred years. What? You mean, Shizu was shocked, she had blindly assumed that the war continued all this time, she had been a child when it first began, and she was hardly sixteen when it took her life. How did you die? Rimuru asked. My hometown was burned to the ground by planes overhead dropping fire upon us. I don't know if my mother survived, but I certainly did not. It was after that when the goddess, Aqua, offered me a chance at reincarnation. The fact that she could act so cheerful and nonchalant after I had just gone through such a tragedy pissed me off, I suppose. I suppose she probably isn't the nicest goddess. That doesn't mean they're all bad though. It might not be my place to say considering I've never met any of them, but they can't all be that bad. Shizu sighed, you're probably right. I've seen how the Axis cult that worships her acts, they are, quite obnoxious. I suppose she might just be an outlier. Either way I was enraged to see how much effort they put into trying to stop the war in this world, yet did nothing for mine. I don't believe they needed to do anything. What do you mean? Shizu asked. How long has this war gone on in this world? Rimuru asked, tilting his slime body. Centuries if I'm correct. Well the war you died in ended in 1945, and Japan has since rebuilt and now knows peace. Shizu looked at the slime in shock. T that would mean, the war ended only a year after I died. I suppose I see now. My I mean our world didn't need the gods help. It was already set to end. This rebuilt Japan, do you think I could see it? Rimuru thought for a moment before nodding, I believe I can show you, here. The slime turned as their surroundings changed from a foggy void to an overhead view of Tokyo at night, lights illuminating the ground below as Shizu looked down in awe. It's like those postcards from New York. This is Japan. Tokyo, to be precise. Shizu's smile suddenly turned sour, I see, so I joined the demon lord's army for nothing. W well I wouldn't say that, Rimuru muttered, trying his best to help her not feel as bad. I don't think I inherently hate myself for it, in the end I was one of the main two people who pushed for the demon lord to not harm innocent civilians, but even still, Shizu sighed, I suppose it's too late now. I'm tired and old, it's time I move on. I see, you mentioned two people who pushed for it, who's the other? Ah, that would be Wiz. She runs a shop in the nearby town of Axel. If I had known this would be my last quest, I would have said goodbye. She's another of the Demon King's generals, but that's in name only. I would like to request that you don't kill her, at least not until it's time to infiltrate the Demon King's castle. I suppose I can do that, if she's not actually doing anything to help the Demon King besides maintaining his barrier which guards the castle I'm not even prepared to attack yet, then I have no reason to kill her. If I ever meet her, I'll tell her you said goodbye. Shizu nodded with a smile, thank you, oh I never got your name, I don't think. My name is Rimuru, Rimuru Tempest. If I may ask, what was your name before? When you lived in Japan? Oh, my name was Satoru Mikami. Well thank you, Satoru. You could have easily just let me die, but you showed me the truth, it's given me one last chance to reflect on my actions, I still have many regrets, but I think I'm ready to move on. Shizu said with a smile, looking down at the slime. It was nice to meet you, if we ever somehow meet again, try not to kill me next time. No promises. The foggy void soon returned as Shizu turned away from the slime, slowly walking into the fog as it engulfed her, never to return. Rimuru sighed, 
Perhaps in another world he would have felt more for her. But while he was happy, that's all he felt. He was satisfied with how she moved on, but he didn't feel particularly sad. For now though, he needed to focus elsewhere. His life as Satoru Mikami was over, and his new life as Rimuru Tempest had just